Good morning. This is the time in our service where we get to participate in communion. The Lord Jesus established communion at the Lord's Supper. It is not a mystical or magical event whereby the bread and the juice are transformed into the Christ, into Christ's body. It is a symbol of Jesus' suffering and his death on the cross. When putting this ordinance in place, Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. Luke 22, 19. Jesus intended communion to instruct us and remind us of the gospel. The elements of the Lord's table are a reminder of Jesus' incarnation, his atonement for our sins, and the assurance of our salvation. Our communion passage for this week is 1 John 3, verses 9 and 10. In this passage is a clear message of the gospel of Jesus. Before we read the passage together, if you do not have a Bible, there are some men up front who would be happy to put one in your hand. Just raise your hand as they come down the aisle and they'll give you one. If you don't own a Bible, you may take this one with you as a gift from Grace Bible Church. So let's pray. Father, thank you for your saving grace. Because of your grace, we come to you this morning with joy and thanksgiving and a deep love for you. We come to be reminded of the great sacrifice that our Lord made for us and also that our sins were the cause of his suffering and death. Father, we thank you for all that you do for your children. In Jesus' name. As many of you know, I grew up in a small town in South Dakota. There were maybe a thousand people in this little town, and the whole time that I lived there, not once did anyone share the gospel of Jesus with me. Most of us went to church occasionally. Many went to church weekly. But I would say that no one knew about the saving work of Christ not even the pastors in the churches. I would say that most everyone would have considered themselves to be a child of God because that's all we knew. But no one would have considered themselves a child of the devil. I didn't know that. But God, God's word tells us something different. So let's read together 1 John 3, verses 9 and 10. No one, who practices, no one who is born of God practices sin, because his seed abides in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. By this, the children of God and the children of the devil are obvious. Anyone who does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor the one who does not love his brother. So let's back up just a couple of verses and look at verses 7 and 8 also. Little children, make sure that no one deceives you. The one who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. The one who practices sin is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. The Son of God appeared for this purpose to destroy the works of the devil. John is talking about false teachers who were attempting to deceive the children of God with the doctrine of the devil. There were false teachers who came along claiming that they knew God, that they, had, they possessed eternal life, even though their lives continued to be characterized by patterns of unbroken sin. They were teaching that salvation was just a change in status, not a person's nature or a change in their eternal destination or man's desires. They were teaching that a person could have a relationship with God and possess eternal life even while, even while living lives 
that were not different than before. This was also known as Gnosticism. John essentially says, this is a lie. It is the devil's deception. Satan is a liar. He is the father of lies, and he wants to move in among the people of God and bring about his deceptions. John is very clear that true believers are transformed in their mind, in their emotions, and in their will. One author describes conversion or salvation as having such a dramatic effect that one has a new nature, new disposition, new attitudes, new motives, new longings, new desires, new loves, new hates, new goals, and a new behavior. In other words, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. The child of God does not live a life of habitual sin because the seed of God abides in him. He has been born of God. Yes, Christians still sin, but John insists that it is possible for the sin to be, it is impossible for the sin, for sin to be a believer's pattern or a practice in their life. That didn't mean that they had to be perfect because John always acknowledged that believing involved ongoing admission, admission of sins and seeking for God's forgiveness. John wanted these believers to have joy and rejoice over the certainty of their salvation rather than being upset or confused by the message of these false teachers. Have you truly experienced the joy of having your sin forgiven? Or what it's like to have a relationship with Jesus? Becoming a child of God requires faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name, John 1.12. Have you asked him for the gift of faith? So many claim to be Christians but in reality are actually children of the devil. That was me. I had not experienced a new birth. I did not have a biblical understanding of who Jesus was, what he had done through his death and resurrection. I knew nothing of what it was like to live a Christian life until God opened my eyes at the age of 44. And I have no doubt that there are so many in the world who are deceived like I was, and possibly some who are even here today at Grace Bible Church. If you've just heard this message and according to your own admission, you don't have a relationship, you are not a believer in Jesus Christ, you're not born of God, the Lord's table is not for you. It is only for those who have placed their faith and trust in Jesus. So if you have not experienced a new birth, please allow the elements to pass you by. However, we would like to talk with you. Please talk with an elder today before you leave Grace Bible Church of what it means to, be true, to have a truly changed life through repentance and faith in Christ. Don't be afraid to ask the tough questions of how you can be reconciled to God and to secure a, an eternal reservation at his table. Your life could be changed today. Jesus himself said in John 6:37, "All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will certainly not cast out." What an amazing promise. Jesus also says in Matthew 11:28 through 30, "Come to me all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart." 
and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Find rest for your soul today so that you can be brought out of the darkness and into light. For those of you who have placed your trust and faith in Christ, please use this time to examine yourself and to acknowledge any unconfessed sin. Rejoice in your relationship with your Savior. Men, please come in service. You may take communion on your own when you're ready. And I'll be back in a few minutes to close our time in prayer. <clears throat>